Welcome to the Thousand Nights and One Night. And when it was the forty-first night, she said, It hath reached me, O auspicious king, that when Ghanim, son of Ayyub, arrived with the chest at his house, he opened it and took out the young lady, who looked about her and seeing that the place was handsome, spread with carpets and dyed with cheerful colors and other deckings, and noting the stuffs up piled and packed bales and otherwise, than that she knew that he was a substantial merchant and a man of much money. Thereupon she uncovered her face and looked at him, and lo, he was a fair youth. So when she saw him, she loved him and said, O oh my Lord, bring us something to eat. O oh my head and mine eyes, replied he, and going down to the bazaar, bought a roasted lamb and a dish of sweet meats, and with these dry fruits and wax candles, besides wine and whatsoever was required of drinking materials, not per forgetting the perfumes. With all his gear, he returned to the house, and when the damsel saw him, she laughed and she kissed him and she clasped his neck, and then she began caressing him, which made his love wax hotter than till he got the mastery of his heart. They ate and they drank, and each had conceived the fondest affection. For indeed, the two were in one age, and one in loveliness. And when the night came on, Ghanim bin Ayyab, the distraught, the thrall of love, rose and lit the wax candles and lamps to the place that blazed with light, after which he produced the wine service and spread the table. Then both sat down again, he and she, and he kept filling and giving her to drink, and she kept filling and giving him to drink, and they played and toyed and laughed and recited verses, whilst their joy increased and their clothe and closer love each to each other. Glory be to the uniter of hearts. They ceased not to carouse after this fashion till near upon dawn, when drowsiness overcame them, and they slept where they were, apart each from the other, till the morning. Then Ghanim arose, and going to the market, bought all they required of meat and vegetables and wine and what not, and brought them to the house, whereupon both sat down to eat and ate their sufficiency. When he sat on wine, they drank and each played with each, until their cheeks flushed red and their eyes took a darker hue, and got him so long to kiss the girl and to lie with her, and he said, O oh, my lady, grant me one kiss of that dear mouth, perchance to quench the fire of my heart. O oh, Ghanim, replied she, wait till I am drunk and dead to the world, then steal a kiss of me secretly and on such wise that I may not know that thou hast kissed me. Then she rose, and taking off her upper dress, sat in a thin shift of fine linen and silken headkerchief. At this passion inflamed Ghanim, and he said to her, O oh, my lady, wilt thou not vouchsafe me what I ask of thee? By Allah, she replied, that may not be thine, for there is written upon my trouser string a hard word. Thereupon Ghanim's heart sank, and desire grew on him, as his object offered difficulties, and he improvised these verses. I ask the author of mine ills to heal the wound with one sweet kiss. No, no, she cried, forever no. But I, soft whispering, urged yes, quoth she. Then take it by my leave, when smile shall pardon thine amiss by force, cried I. Nay, she replied, with love and gladness, eke I wise. Now ask me not what next occurred. Seek grace of God and wise of this. Deem what thou wilt of us, for love by cal calamities the sweeter is. Nor after this care I one jot, whether my foe be known or not. Then his affection increased, and love fires rose hotter in his heart, while she refused her herself to him. Thou canst not possess me. They ceased not to make love, and enjoy their wine and wassail, whilst Ghanim was drowned in the sea of love and longing. But she redoubled in coyness and cruelty till the night brought on the darkness, and let fall on them the skirts of sleep. Thereupon, Ghanim rose and lit the lamps and wax candles, and refreshed the room and removed the table. Then he took her feet and kissed them, and finding them like fresh cream, pressed his face on them and said to her, O oh, my lady, take pity on one thy love hath pain and thine eyes hath slain. 
for indeed I were heart whole but for thy bane. And he wept somewhat. O oh, my lord, and light of my eyes, quoth she, by Allah, I love thee in very sooth, and I trust to thy truth, but I know that I may not be thine. And what is the obstacle? asked he. When she answered, Tonight I will tell thee my tale, that thou mayest accept my excuse. She, she threw herself upon him, and winding her arms like a necklace about his neck, kissed him and caressed him, and promised him her favors. And they ceased not playing and laughing till love got the firmest hold of both their hearts. And so it continued a whole month, both passing the night on a single carpet bed. But whenever he would enjoy her, she put him off whilst mutual love increased upon them and each could hardly abstain from the other one night as he lay by her side and both were warm with wine ganem passed his hand over her breast and stroked them then he slipped it down to her waist as far as her navel she awoke and sitting up put her hand to her trousers and finding them fast tied once more fell asleep presently he again felt her, and sliding his hand down to her trouser string, began pulling at it, whereupon she awoke and sat up right, Canem, also sat up by her side, and she asked him, What dost thou want? I want to lie with thee, he answered, and that we may deal openly and frankly with each other, quoth she. I must now declare to thee my case, that thou mayest know my quality. Then will my secret be disclosed to thee, and my excuse be manifest to thee. Quoth he, So be it. Thereat, she opened the skirt of her shift, and taking up her trouser strings, said to him, O my lord, read what is worked on the flat of this string. So he took it in his hand, and saw these words embroidered on it in gold. I am thine, and thou art mine, O cousin of the apostle. When he read this, he withdrew his hand and said to her, um, Tell me who thou art. So be it, answered she. Know that I am one of the concubines of the commander of the faithful, and my name is Kut al-Kulub, the food of hearts. I was brought up in this palace, and when I grew to woman's estate, he looked on me and noting what share of beauty and loveliness the Creator had given me, loved me with exceeding love, and assigned me a separate apartment, and gave me ten slave girls to wait on me, and all these ornaments that thou seest me wearing. Oh, on a certain day he sent me out for one of his provinces, and the Lady Zubeda came to one of the slave girls in my service and said to her, I have something to require of thee. What is it, O oh my lady? asked she, and the caliph's wife answered. When thy mistress, Kut al is asleep, put this be bit of bong into her nostrils, or drop it into her drink, and thou shalt have of me as much money as will satisfy thee. With love and gladness, replied the girl, and took the bong from her, being a glad woman because of the money, and because aforetime she had been one of Zubadah's slaves. So she put the bong in my drink, and when it was night I drank, and the drug had no sooner settled in my stomach than I fell to the ground, my head touching my feet, and knew not of my life but that I was in another world. When her device succeeded, she bade put me into this chest, and secretly brought in the slaves and the doorkeepers, and bribed them. And on the night when thou wast perched upon the date tree, she sent the blacks to me with me as thou sawest. So my delivery was at thy hands, and thou broughtest me to this house, and hast entreated me honorably and with kindness. This is my story, and I want not what to become of the caliph during my absence. Know, then, my condition, and divulge not my case. When Ganem heard her words, and knew that she was a concubine of the caliph, he drew back for awe of the caliphate, beset him, and sat apart from her in one of the corners of the place, blaming himself and brooding over his affair and patience in his heart bewildered for love of one he could not possess then he wept for excess of longing and plained him of fortune and her injuries and the world and its enmities and praise be to him who caused generous hearts to be troubled with love and beloved and who 
endowed not the minds of the mean and miserly with so much of it as even if a grain weight. So he began repeating. The lover's heart for his beloved must meet sad pain, and from her charms bear sore defeat. What is love's taste? They asked and answered I, sweet is the taste, but ah, tis bitter sweet. Thereupon, Kut Akulub arose and took him to her bosom and kissed him, for the love of him was firm fixed in her heart so that she disclosed to him her secret and all the affection she felt and throwing her arms around Ghanim's neck like a collar of pearls, kissed him again and yet again. But he held off from her in awe of the caliph. Then they talked together a while, and indeed both were drowned in the sea of their mutual love, and as the day broke, Ghanim rose and donned his clothes, and going to the bazaar as he was wont, took what the occasion required and returned home. He found her weeping, but when she saw him she checked herself, and smiling through her tears, said, Thou hast desolated me, O beloved of my heart. By all of this hour of absence hath been to me like a year. I have explained to thee my condition in the excess of my eager love for thee. So come thou near me, and forget the past, and have thy will of me. But he interrupted her, crying, I seek refuge with Allah. This thing may never be. How shall the dog sit in the lion's stead? What is the Lord is unlawful to the slave? So he withdrew from her and sat down in a corner of the mat. Her passion for him increased with forbearance. So she seated herself by his side and caroused and played with him till the two were flushed with wine and she was mad for her own dishonor. Then she sang these verses. The lover's heart is like to break in twain till when these coy denials, ah, till when, O oh, thou who flightest me sends fault of mine, Gazelles are wont at times prove tame to men. Absence, aversion, distance, and disdain. How, how shall long, young lover all these ill sustain? Thereupon, Ganem wept, and she wept at his weeping, and they ceased not drinking till nightfall, when he rose and spread two beds, each in its place. For whom is the second bed? asked she, and he answered her, One is for me, and the other is for thee. From this night forth we must not sleep, save thus, for that which is the Lord's is unlawful to the thrall. Oh, my master, cried she, let us have done with this, for all things come to pass by fate and fortune. But he refused, and the fire was lighted in her heart. And as her longing waxed fiercer, she clung to him and cried, By Allah, we will not sleep save side by side. Allah forfend, he replied and prevailed against her and lay apart till the morning when love and longing redoubled on her and distraction and eager thirst of passion they abode after this fashion three full told months which were long and longsome indeed and every time she made advances to him he would refuse himself and say whatever belongeth to the master is unlawful to the man now when time waxed tiresome and tedious to her, and anguish and distress grew on her, she burst out from her oppressed heart with these verses. How long, rare beauty, wilt do wrong to me? Who was it bade thee not belong to me? Without outer charms thou weddest inner grace, comprising every point in piquancy. Passion thou hast infused in every heart, from eyelids driven sleep by deputy, erst while I wot the spray made then a leaf, Cassia spray, and leap thy sin I see. The heart erst hunted I, how is to I spy? The hunter hunted fair my heart by thee. Wonder, sir, still I tell thee I that I am trapped while never up the trap thou be. Now grant my prayer, for if I grudge thyself to thee, I grudge my me more jealousy. I cry so long as life belong to me. Rare beauty, how? How long this wrong to me? They abode in this state a long time, and fair kept Ganem aloof from her. So far concerning these two, but as regards the Lady Zubida, when in the Caliph's absence she had done this deed by Kut al she became perplexed, saying to herself, What shall I tell my cousin when he comes back and asks for her? <laughs> what? Then she called an old woman who was a 
about her and discovered her secret by saying, How shall I act, seeing that Kut al Kulu died by such untimely death? Oh, my lady, quoth the old crone, the time of the caliph's return is near. So do thou send for a carpenter and bid him to make thee a figure of wood in the form of a corpse. We will dig a grave for it midmost the palace and there bury it. Then do thy build on oratory over it, and set therein lighted candles and lamps, and order each and every in the palace to be clad in black. Furthermore, command thy handmaids and eunuchs, as soon as they know of the caliph's returning from his journey, to spread straw over the vestibule floors. And when the commander of the faithful enters and asks what is the matter, let them say, Kut al is dead, and may Allah abundantly compensate thee for the loss of her. And for the high esteem in which she was held of our mistress, she hath buried her in her own palace. When he hears this, he will weep, and it shall be grievous to him. Then will he cause perlocations of the Quran to be made for her, and he will watch by night at her tomb. Should he say to himself, Verily, Zubidah, the daughter of my uncle, hath com compassed in her jealousy the debt of Kut al Kulub, or if long, long love overcoming him and he bid her to be taken out of her tomb fear and found not for when they dig down and come to the image in human shape he will see it shrouded in costly grave clothes and if he wish to take off the winding sheet that he may look upon her do thou forbid him or let some other forbid him saying the sight of her nakedness is unlawful the fear of the world to come will restrain him and he will believe that she is dead and will restore the figure to its place and thank thee for thy doings, and thus thou shalt escape. Please, Almighty Allah, from this sloth of despond. When the Lady Zubida heard her words, she commanded the council and gave her a dress of honor and a large sum of money, ordering her to do all that she had said. So the old woman set about the business forthright and bade the carpenter make her the aforementioned said image, and as soon as it was finished, she brought it to the Lady Zubida who shrouded it and buried it and built a sepulchre over it, wherein they lit candles and lamps and laid down carpets about the tomb. Moreover, she put on black and she spread abroad in the harem that Kut al Kulub was dead. After a time, the caliph returned from his journey and went up to the palace thinking only of Kut al Kulub. He saw all the pages and eunuchs and handmaids habited in black, at which his heart fluttered with extreme fear. And when he went into the Lady Zubida, he found her also garbed in black. So he asked the cause of this, and they came, <coughs> gave him tidings of the death of Kut al Kulub, whereon he fell a swooning. As soon as he came to himself, he asked for her tomb, and the Lady Zubida said to him, No, O Prince of the Faithful, for a special honor I have buried her here in my own palace. Then he repaired in his traveling garb to the tomb that he might wail over her and found the carpet spread and the candles and the lamps light then he saw this he thanked zubida for her good deed and abode perplexed halting between belief and unbelief at last suspicion overcame him and he gave order to open the grave and take out the body we saw the shroud and what have removed it to look upon her the fear of allah almighty restrained him and the old woman taking advantage of the delay said Restore her to her place. Then he sent at once for the fakers and the Quran readers, and caused perlocations to be made over her tomb, and sat by the side of the grave, weeping till he fainted. And he continued to frequent the tomb and sit there for a whole month. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day, and ceased saying her permitted say. And so do I cease for today until we meet again on the morrow.